welcome to the D3D4 Football Podcast with me, your host, James Richards. Right, everyone. Hello. Back with our traditional Sleigh Bell Christmas podcast. And we're recording this via Zoom this year, so uh, you will be able to see and hear us at the same time if you go to our YouTube channel. Um, Welcome. I suppose I should introduce us all because you won't uh, know our ugly mugs very well. Uh, We've got Chris Stringer. Say hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. Why don't I say hello, Chris? (laughs) Yes, okay. Very good. Uh, we have Ed Walker. How are you doing, Ed? Good morning. I'm not too bad, apart from the league tables, but, you know. And the fact that you're not wearing anything festive, I have to say. Well, I'm not in the mood looking at those tables. It, it's it's behavior. long season, long season. And, uh, yeah, and of course, season. Monsieur Original, it's uh, Luke Saunders back again. How are you doing, mate? Very good, thanks. Happy to be back for another Christmas podcast. And you've got me wearing a hat, which makes me look silly on on zoom so there we go yeah look i'm wearing an oxford united christmas jumper right and if oxford fans remember our 96 away kit yeah and chris is wearing his olden one lovely uh it was a gray and yellow one which i can imagine didn't sell too well but there you go they've gone for a, a questionable design but it is christmas so we're all here to to make fools of ourselves like Let's jump into the pot because the first thing I have to do is shout out the patron campaign. It's done really well. I really appreciate uh, all the patron support. It's been absolutely brilliant. I can't thank you enough. It helps us do things like this, which is, you know, record uh, our podcast to Zoom. It helps us host the podcast. It helps us host the website and keep that going. Um, and it's really appreciated. And the latest patrons join is Mark Wagstaff. Um, really uh, appreciate, as I say, you joining the campaign and being part of the team. And any of our patrons, of course, if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to uh, post questions to us for the podcast just uh, drop it on twitter to us or you can email us d3d4football at hotmail.com i would recommend you get them in saturday evening at the latest so make sure i pick them up before the podcast which we record on sundays guys uh, a busy schedule yesterday um before we get into it let's just ask how your festive period's going so far so chris how you doing you're doing all right up in you're in, up in leeds i think aren't you still yeah yeah up in leeds um finished now for a couple of weeks so i'm uh, looking forward to a bit of time off time off you're a student isn't it like you're always on time off <laughs> yeah it's not our phd works james <laughs> yeah your phd yeah, you're a bit a bit further along than uh, than the average student i think at the moment ed how's your festive period been it's not too bad um taking away from the football i think i'm doing all right at the moment it's all you know the news yesterday for all people wasn't particularly great hearing what boris had to say but no festive period it's quite nice it's nice to be around the family at this time certainly Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Tier, we're in tier four here now. I assume tier 10 means you're not allowed to get out of bed or something. I don't know. I don't know I how think it's stage. <laughs> I think it's you're not allowed to look out the window, I think, it's the official, official guy. Tier 10? Is that tier the, 10, yeah. That's the next one. All right. We should play a game. What tier are you in? <laughs> yeah, I think Santa's going to have real problems delivering presents this year, actually, with social really distancing is. stuff. Oh, I was thinking what? Is. Fishing rods? You've got to put hand sanitizer on. Well, he's, he's, I've heard he's converted his sleigh from a bottle of Dettol. It's kind of a clever, mm. yeah. And he's going to fishing rod it down the chimney. But he's obviously, don't panic anyone. He's cleaned the rod before he does it and after each one. He, and he uses those hands. And so you have to quarantine for two weeks after every country he goes to. So it could be quite a long period now. That's a point, actually. How's he got around? I assume he's got some sort of multifaceted passport system because otherwise, you know, he, he would be slow every, every yeah. Christmas. Mm, interesting stuff in fact let's forget football this is quite interesting we could get into <laughs> some quite interesting subjects here luke how you been mate? we haven't had you back on for a long time how's, how's it going with you yeah very good thanks um yeah i've been looking to get back so excited to excited to be back on but yeah i think we've we've stayed in tier two so you know at Cheltenham, there's lots going on with with fans coming back we've had a couple of games with supporters back already so um and and we're preparing for boxing day now as well so you know, we're one of the lucky ones in that sense, I suppose, that we can we can welcome our supporters back and have been able to already. But yeah, that's that's quite tough. Jumping from tier two to four. I mean, it's hard enough going to tier three, but then, bang, new new tier system, and you uh, leapfrog yeah. two. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's strange. I mean, yeah, I won't go into the politics. Let's keep politics off this pod. But it is, <laughs> it's not been the best handled uh, situation, I don't think. Try uh, being a northerner. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, 
no, I don't. Uh, I don't think I can handle. I don't think I handle being. Not, I, I can't understand a word any of you lot say. I have to. I have to. Put, I have to put this podcast through Google Translate to make sure you haven't said anything libelous each week, Chris. That's a bit. That's a bit harsh. A bit harsh. <laughs> Sorry. Did he? What did he just say, Luke? I think. I think he's. He's from. Where are you from? Staffordshire Way, uh, Ed. Staffordshire Way. Yeah. 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 Sorry, but you have to translate. I can't understand. It's not my headphones. Just the... Anyway, let's jump with, uh, straight into League One. And uh, top for Christmas, Portsmouth, thanks to a very generous performance by Hull City, giving them uh, two own goals. I would say neither particularly bad in the own goal book, um, but still deserved all the same. Portsmouth have... I think improved immeasurably under Kenny Jacket in the sense of the sort of dodgy start they had this season where there was a lot of pressure on him. They're starting to play good football. Uh, Marquez, like we've already said on this pod, is being used properly. Harness is in great form, Ed. Um, you know, you're, you're a big fan of him and I'm sure slightly jealous that they, they've taken him south and, and he's now playing in the Just team top bit. of the league. Yeah. Just a bit. But do we, do we think, like, Portsmouth top of the league, and they are a big club and there is this sense, I think, of they have to get out of this division at some point. And that's why there's more pressure on someone like Kenny Jacket to, to win every week, you know, than say there is going to be another team in this, in this league, but he is doing a good job, isn't he? And I think the pressure, um, I sports fans talk, still tell me all the time he's under pressure just because <laughs> yeah. his football is not like that attractive, but he is finding a way to win. Um, and despite it's being a bit pragmatic, what do you reckon Ed? It, it, it's getting results. You, you can't complain too much, surely. It's getting results, but I think the main problem with Portsmouth is that he can't get them over the line. You think about the last couple of seasons, they've always been up towards the top of the table, but he's fallen away twice in the playoffs. They lost to Sutherland, they lost to Oxford. Portsmouth want to be in the Championship. They should be in the Championship. They've got a great squad, one that could be competing in there. The fact Jacket isn't getting them over the line is, I think, the reason why Portsmouth fans still have the doubts about him. Yeah. But you can't complain about the position they're in the minute. I absolutely love having Tom Naylor in midfield, talking about another expert and player in there as well. Naylor and Harness have been fantastic in there. He's really making good use of Mark Quist. Ronan Curtis continues to be a threat down on the left-hand side. Those fullbacks are Pring and um, Callum Johnson. Great pair to have. I just still, it's a lovely side from front to back, and they're deservedly top of the table at the minute. But you're just not entirely sure if they're going to stay there because this isn't. This is a division this year where there isn't one standout side. You'd have to say, really. I think we looked at Hull a few weeks ago and thought maybe they were, but they've kind of fallen away recently and come back into the pack. I'd, I'd agree. Yeah, there isn't one standout. And the same in League Two as well, actually. There's no standout team um, that you yeah. think are going to run away with it. I mean, we haven't got a situation where, you know, I think in that season where Shrewsbury Town were really unlucky not to go up, we had Blackburn and Wigan, and they were a cut above the other teams. And I think Shrewsbury did immensely well to stay with them. I don't see someone running away with League One this season yeah. at all. I no, can't I'm see sure anyone doing it. They've gone four unbeaten now, Portsmouth, in the, in the league as well. So it's put them in a great position. Um, you make a good point about the fact they can't get them over the line. I mean, they have never won a playoff, have they? They've never, they've never reached the playoff final. I don't think they lost they have, to no. Leicester. I remember watching on TV. I said, well, they, they lost to Leicester well, City. I mean, I mean, for several years, they were just falling down the pyramid rather than going up it. If well, that huge about, financial crash, wasn't it? If you go back, about 10, yeah, go back it? about 10 years, they were just mm. falling down the pyramid. They're starting to climb back up. They obviously, it was a few years ago now, they won the league two title on the last day, didn't they? Yeah, with that yeah, crazy that was the Cheltenham game, wasn't it? You were there, Luke, weren't you? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, that was yeah, that was an unbelievable best atmosphere. I think they were, think they were top for about thirty <laughs> minutes, weren't they, in that season? I think, which I, is quite I, something. Yeah, they. Um, it, I mean, when you talk about the struggles, you know, there was a time where they were paying players on one one month contracts. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And that and look at where they've come from there. I think it's always important, and you make a good point, Luke. It's always important to remember where you've come from, like Portsmouth. I, you know. As much, as much as we love those those era, that era where they were in the Premier League, uh, where they were playing AC Milan, you know, in at Fratton Park. Can you believe that? Pipo and Zaghi scoring goals. Yeah, Fratton Park, you know, unbelievable. But they've also been very close to going out of the Football League and more importantly, out of business. So to climb back up and to move in the right direction is, is, is immeasurably you know, positive. And yes, they haven't got over the line. Like I said, they've never won a playoff semi-final. They've lost to Oxford, uh, Sunderland and Leicester. Uh, the ones I can remember, I watched them. Julian Jurgen scoring that goal for Leicester, I think at Filbert Street at the time, um, which which meant that they, they didn't make it into that final. And then Leicester, I think, lost that final to Swindon, which was a 4-3 cracking game 
probably one of the best playoff finals in history. So, yeah, they they probably. I feel this is their best opportunity. Would you agree, guys, yeah. to get over that? Yeah. Because, like we said, there's no Definitely. powerhouse here stopping them, and they are probably themselves a powerhouse this season with the quality in their squad. And again, if they need to strengthen in January, they may well be able to with the with the backing of um, is it Michael Eisner, their owner? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, he's got the money. So they're in a great position to carry on going. Uh, Gillingham, best performance of the season. That's uh, that's what we've been told by the Jules fans who watched the game. Obviously only seen the highlights, but they did look impressive um, against, a, let's be fair, a depleted Rochdale team. They're missing a few key players in this one. Uh, and Rochdale are not the side, are they? That you know, When they've got the first team 11 out, they're actually pretty formidable. You can see them uh, bossing up against a few teams that keep possession well. But as soon as you scrape away that first 11 and you start looking for depth, it's just not there. And, and it's not a surprise. They're a small team in a pandemic trying to survive financially. But Gillingham were just far too strong for them yesterday, Chris. And 4-1, Akinde, I mean, he gets, uh, he, you know, he gets mocked quite a lot on Twitter, Akinde, uh, but for being ineffective. I mean, I find it laughable when professional footballers who are playing in the professional pyramid are mocked by fans for not being effective. I mean... Clearly, he is effective, or he wouldn't be playing in League One. And yesterday, he proved far too hot to handle for a Rochdale defence. Uh, yeah, I had an absolutely fantastic performance yesterday. A um, couple of other good players in there as well, Robertson and uh, Ogilvy. Um, really impressive. But as you say, it was a, a depleted Rochdale side. Um, and it is something we've talked about a bit with them already this season. That they're down towards the bottom end, and it is that depth that they're really lacking Um which, you know, especially in the context of them, as you say, struggling in a pandemic, being at one of the smaller clubs and still being in tier three, um, it's difficult to see that turning around anytime soon as well. Yeah, I, I, I think if Rochdale, like I've said, I've said this to there's some Rochdale fans we interact with regularly on social media, and I've said to them, if you stay up this season, job done. That's all you need yeah. to do. You know, because there's, there's some good teams, Burton with a squad that you'd argue is not a bottom four squad, uh, you've got Swindon, who we know if they could defend, were, are actually quite a decent side going forward. You know, and, and Shrewsbury, under um, their new manager, have slowly already started to turn it around. Or I should say rapidly turn it around, really. He hasn't been there long and they've already improved immeasurably. So it, it's going to be a real challenge to stay up. There's four yeah. relegation places again this season. If you get sucked into it, I mean, Oxford. Who, we could, whose we idea could... was that, giving up four relegation places? I hate it. <laughs> Who, whose idea that's the one thing I hate about this league whose idea is it to get in the four places well I think whose when I was, was Oxford or in league two we loved oh. for the fact that it was four I know you, you love it when you're top of league two then you go into league one you realise oh wow there's actually a lot of spaces here to compete for it's horrible yeah, yeah. I don't know why actually does anyone I don't know listeners anyone know why league two has always had that extra promotion spot is it to do no, with no, two, no no two go down from that league as well which just is, is it to do with merging of regional leagues at some point it could possibly be it yeah. could possibly be or maybe it's about the number of teams that need to move in each division they've, they've only had, until recently had one going down so now they've got two going down and four going up so six six changes in the division same as league one maybe i don't know but it's 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 a it's squeaky bum time from about this time of the season on for anyone <laughs> who's stuck down the bottom of the table and it's yeah hard hard league <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty close as well, though, to be fair. Like, you look at Burton, I'd say Wigan as well. They're the two at the moment you'd be most worried about. because <laughs> everyone, Obviously, because they're 23rd and 24th, but actually because they're slightly adrift, yeah. you know, a win for Burton would, would not see them climb, clamber out of that bottom uh, four. Whereas if Shrewsbury get a win or, or Swin and get a win, they'll be on 20 points and they could jump, you know, up to sort of 15th in the table. So that's, that's the worry. But Ed, your team losing yesterday... Um, what do you make of the game? Because, of course, you, you're playing a pretty tough opposition in Doncaster who are, who are absolutely flying. No, um, I only managed to watch the highlights back on this, but Doncaster are brilliant. I think we've got to give them a lot of credit and we've got to take them as seriously as we're taking teams like Portsmouth, Lincoln and Hull. You say they that look, in my look... notes here, I have got Doncaster for automatic promotion, question mark. Yeah, it's definitely contention. I think Ben White yeah. and... He's one of the division's best midfielders. He could easily be playing in the division above. They're very lucky to have him. Reese James has looked really good in the left wing at the minute, which, considering he's a left back, is testament to them. Sajiri Kenabihi, we've already said, lethal finisher, so good. Anderson, fantastic as well. Halliday, Cameron John looked really good at left back. Joe Lumley's a very reliable goalkeeper. 
love John Taylor as well. I'd be really liking Magic Gomez when he plays. They're just a, a very nice side for front to back. And it's actually the first time they've beaten Burton in a game, but it was deserved yesterday. Like they're playing against what is the worst team in the division at the moment. So it was probably always a given from the start and well done to them. And yeah, I think they're fully in the mix to be right up there at the top with at least playoffs and potentially even go to the top two with the way the division is at the moment. Yeah, I, agree. I completely agree. And, and, and like we said before, with the point about Portsmouth, is if, if there is no powerhouse team, if there is no one running away with this division, what an opportunity this could be for a side like Doncaster, who are, I guess, one of the archetypal well-run teams at, at this level of football. They don't seem to struggle. They obviously have got their, their new ground and moved away. Do you remember? Anyone remember? Is it Bellevue, their old ground? Bit it before was, my time, I think that was, but yeah, too young for us, James. Oh dear. Anyway, yeah, it was it was <laughs> uh, a tired ground, and it, I think it actually ended up blowing up um, due to a gas leak or something. After, yeah, it, luckily it was after it was shut as a as a you know a public football stadium, but it was uh, it, it, it's it's a transition. I mean, it's a huge transition they've made since those days, Doncaster, to being a club that now you could argue have the infrastructure and quality to be in the championship. Yeah. Darren Moore, does he get enough credit, Luke? I mean, what what a job he's done there. He has, yeah, and it's, it's been a couple of seasons now as well, and there have been some changes in the personnel around the club too. And although you've got your stalwarts like your, your Coppingers, etc., the, the the way they've kind of recruited too has been very very impressive. And he, he, I think he has gone under the radar because he came from West Brom, didn't he? Um, he was sacked when West Brom were fourth, wasn't it, when they were in the championship? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, since then he's kind of built the club up to, to, you know, to be pretty strong. I know they didn't quite get where they wanted to last year, but it was the previous year they were, they were flying quite high, weren't they? So I think, he, um, I think he's done a brilliant job and, and hopefully he can do, you know, like Jacket at Portsmouth, he's been there while they've been up, up and around it and hopefully they can, uh, they can get there. Because as you said, the infrastructure, the stadium's a nice stadium. It, I know they don't obviously sell all the seats in there, but it has the potential to be a championship ground. And, and a lot of those players have potential to, to have a go and, 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 and thrive in the championship as well. Yeah, the current run is like the best since 2019. So it's not a long time since they've had uh, four straight wins, but you can't sniff at four straight wins at any level. It's, it's a pretty difficult division to get a consistent run of form going. In fact, when you look at these sort of runs, it's quite amazing sometimes how far back you have to go to find like, the last time teams achieved it because, you know, ultra competitive division, Really good teams, all vying for um, this sort of very small set of promotion places. And the fact that we've now got a salary cap does level the playing field going forward. I mean, obviously not quite this season, but it will do going forward. It'd be very interesting to see how that plays out. Talking of level playing field, Lincoln City, 10 clean sheets this season. Um, Alex Palmer, the goalkeeper, has been great. But you don't get clean sheets just because we keep it. Let's be honest, here. that helps. But you have to be a good team all the way through from midfield back to defence to get 10 clean sheets in a season when you've only played, what was it, 20? How many games do we actually play now? 18 they've played. 18, 19, roughly the most teams. You yeah, really? They've, they've got 10 clean sheets from 18 games. I didn't even, you know, you, you think 10 clean sheets, so that's, that's pretty impressive. But from 18 matches, that's ridiculous, isn't it? They can have another one on Boxing Day as well. <laughs> yeah, cheer up, Ed. Come on, man, it's festive spirit. It's Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> You're just being charitable. You know, Burton are a great charity community team. They're giving out points left, right and centre. This is the season for giving. Interesting way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and thankfully, it's, uh, you can't have any of those silly claims about you being the best team in yellow when you're bottom of the table. I'll so. oh, wait till the second. I'm just saying that. It just well, makes yeah, a we, change we... for me not being the miserable one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your team's breaking record. Well, I'm quite jovial. My team didn't play yesterday, so I didn't have to stomach it. But we, did, we did beat Northampton 4-0, um, you know, and uh, Lincoln go and match that, which is a bit annoying because I thought we'd, you know, stealing our thunder a little bit there, Ames fans. But uh, it does suggest that, not, not being too harsh on, on Northampton, because Oxford played well in that second half, and Lincoln are a very, very good team. You don't sit at the top sort of echelons of League One without being a good team, but... Yeah, like massive credit to him because Michael Appleton, I think Danny Cowley said it very well on the on the highlights, how the club back their managers at Lincoln. Yeah. They don't just bring them in and sort of say, here's your squad, you know, go and do your best with it. They literally say, what do you want us to do? How do you want us to do it? And, and they've implemented that. And that's why Lincoln have been so successful in such really quite a short space of time. Because I know Appleton struggled in that transitional period. Uh, but that's 
not to be unexpected. He did that at Oxford as well. But as soon as he gets his own players, they are a formidable side, Michael Appleton's teams. And they, you know, they've had a couple of setbacks recently, uh, but yeah, they were far too strong for Northampton. And I did see, this is an interesting point, I think uh, Gabe Sutton made it on, on Twitter, that he thought that Keith Curl is the most underrated manager in the FL. What do we think, guys? Do we, do well, we the think Northampton that? fans weren't very keen on that statement, let's put it that way. Uh, I think I didn't look very keen on that. I think he's a, a, just an average manager. I think he's, he's fine in the bottom half of League One, top half of League Two. I think that's his level. I definitely would say he's the most standard. He, he, so, he's in league in league two. He 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 always seems to do pretty well. But then again, he's been at two, I'd say, pretty big clubs in in league two lately. Um, so you kind of there is an expectation to get promoted. But in yeah. league one and and the style as well. Um, <laughs> the style, yes. Uh, what style? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I I, I think uh, in league two with good backing, he has got a team over the line just. One thing you have to say, though, is that he can motivate a team because the way he got them to knock uh, Cheltenham out of the playoffs and then beat Exeter, you know, unbelievable. That's, that's down to him as a man-manager and a motivator. But, you know, moving beyond that, I, I don't see him as being the most underrated manager at all. In fact, you know, there are probably a dozen candidates that I, I'd probably put ahead of him. He is, though, struggling this season, let's be honest. And, and Northampton have traditionally in the last few campaigns in this division struggled to to make the grade haven't they because you know when uh, i think it was justin edward took them up did he get sacked after four games wasn't it in it was a while ago wasn't it i think it might be similar to that yeah yeah he got sacked after four games then he had dean austin come in i'm sure no how, who was it hasselbank came in as well hasselbank did come in yeah that didn't work yeah. out which i really i really thought that was going to to be honest but i forgot about that thing that happened <laughs> Isn't it crazy? It's crazy how quickly, you know, because they, they had Chris Wilder obviously left Oxford to Northampton and then got them up. Um, but it hasn't really been plain sailing since then. And they don't look like a side that are going to. I mean, the good thing is, under Keith Curl football, they generally beat the teams at the bottom. Yeah, they're capable of battering you. They yeah. are capable of doing that too. If you're not prepared for a physical battle, you'll get beaten. Yeah, no, and no, they've shown that so far yeah. with some of their wins. They, they have, but they have shown as well in some yeah. of their defeats how they just collapse. Yeah. They can just collapse. Yeah. And uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a good performance yesterday. Uh, one thing that I would say about yesterday's results is that not to overlook Plymouth's clean sheet. No. <laughs> After their run. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. They, um, they've, they've been shocking in defence this season. They've been, they've, been, they've been terrible. I mean, the last few games, I was having a look at the goals conceded. Um, Obviously, they, they lost five in a row, so you, you're always going to concede goals in a run like that. Uh, but they conceded three at Bristol Rovers, four at home to Rochdale, and five away to to uh, Fleetwood. And even in their <laughs> results before that, they drew two at Portsmouth, conceded two against Swindon. So they you know they haven't kept a clean sheet since. In fact, have they? How many have they kept this season? So the last one was a goal. Oh, sorry, uh, Ed. Yeah, <laughs> the last, the last against- league one. Last one is in the 10th of October against Burton. Do you see why, do you see why I'm miserable? Do you see why I'm in this state? Merry yes. Christmas, everybody. Yeah, indeed. So, yeah, okay. Apart from, so Burton is like a guaranteed clean sheet. Okay. Cheers. Uh, you, you scored yesterday, didn't you? Was, th- was it 3 1 final score? It was a penalty from Lucas Aikens, which is a given because he's great at them. That's, it was that's a hell the way of a penalty. To be fair. He always takes them that good. He's been doing it for years. It's the only reliable penalty taker we've got. <laughs> So. He's got 11 Lucas Aikens on the pitch. Yeah, 11 Lucas Aikens would yeah. be winning this league, but unfortunately, there's only one of them. So, well, that's this po- <laughs> we'll name that's it. We'll name this podcast the team of Lucas Aikens. Yeah, please. <laughs> that would be decent. But yeah, so Plymouth, a big win for Ryan Lowe. He's been linked, as we know, to Bradford. Yeah. Uh, very interesting that obviously Bradford are saying that's not true. They're quick to dispel that. There is sometimes an expression, though, that I think deserves a little bit of credence, which is no smoke without fire. I have a feeling that he would be seen as the ideal candidate by Bradford, obviously with his record. But also, he, he's, he's from that region. He's from up north. Uh, up north. It's all up north, yeah. isn't it, Luke? The north. That one, that one area, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, Yorkshire's yeah. now the same as the Wirral. Okay, we'll cover that. That's it, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, thought, I thought Bradford was next door to Sunderland, wasn't it? 
I don't know. I'll look at my map. But in seriousness, no. I mean, is this something? Is this something you see happening? Oh, I don't know. Can you can you imagine it happening though? Just for It'd a moment, funny. leaving yeah. Plymouth to join relegation. I just think it, uh, I could. I couldn't imagine the reaction from the Plymouth fan base if they saw that. Would I, not be good at all. No, Would I can't not see it happening. Be good at all. Oh, no. piss boil. <laughs> Twitter meltdown. They'd probably break Twitter, actually, wouldn't they? <laughs> I, would, I would imagine. Um, it, look, yeah. it, it could it could make sense. I know it's a different circumstance. Richie Wellens moved back up to his area, sort of his local kind of area with, with Salford, but it's a different club in in at the moment, a different direction. But you look at Bradford's sort of history and the size of the club. I mean, he, he has dropped down a division before. I know Barry's circumstance was unfortunate and, and everyone was, was kind of was leaving Barry at that time when he came down to Plymouth. But as, as, as you guys are kind of leaning towards it, 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 just the circumstance that Bradford are in. I mean, it's not like he's coming in to then push them up for a promotion. Yeah. Charge. It's going to take a lot longer than this season. I just, I like. just feel as well, I've seen this every time he's been linked with the championship job as well. He's got a project at Plymouth. They love him down there. Plymouth have yeah. got the infrastructure in place long term to be in the second tier and they can do that with him. I don't really know why he'd want to say no to that. It's a bit like Michael Duff at Cheltenham. I don't know why he'd want to leave Cheltenham at the minute. Why would you want to leave a project at the minute that's looking really good to go somewhere that potentially could not work out? Like Graham Coughlin. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, looking at the other results that took place yesterday, Crew, another late winner. It gets all the headlines because they score late winners all the time, don't they, Crew? But actually, another really well-worked team goal is pointed out by Tim, uh, Tim on uh, on Twitter, a friend of the pod, Tim, of course. How are you doing, Tim? Hope you're well and having a, a good uh, festive period, despite probably being in Tier 2 where you are. I think Liverpool is Tier 2. Is that right, yeah. Chris? Liverpool? It yeah. is Tier 2 because I keep seeing my friends in pubs and restaurants and I keep wanting to cry. Don't, don't worry. Don't, knowing knowing don't. the way these tier systems work, they'll be in Tier 4 tomorrow, so... <laughs> <laughs> probably uh, but they did they've done really well crew uh, um, shady zebras uh, they're like from a noir film aren't they you know they, they keep going uh, I, I don't want to big them up too much because I'm not you know I'm, I'm a bit sort of like the, the jinx for most teams when I start saying that they're going to do well but you can't deny they've had a very good run of results um, they're playing well they've got 31 points so they're only four points off top this is how tight this division is. <laughs> and they're ninth. And they're ninth in the table. Four points off top. That's wonderful. It's absolutely... Six points even, sorry. Sorry, yeah, six points off top. So I'm looking at the wrong, wrong, wrong thing here. But that is a testament to what this division is this season. And that is a testament to how easily a team just needs to go on a run. And they can, they can fly up the league table. It's, it'll be absolutely brilliant. I mean, Fleetwood, they drew 1-1 with Wigan yesterday. Great result for Wigan. Big disappointment for Fleetwood, considering, like again, they're in and amongst that pack. Um, you know the weather conditions were, were appalling so it, it wasn't conducive for great football but again it's Fleetwood you know, what do you expect <laughs> it's, yeah it's always let's be it, honest let's be honest it's always bad up there it's pretty bad up there always. isn't it and then the goal music as well you know I actually love that well I was thinking for, for your Christmas gift from D3D4 <laughs> oh, I no send, please no I was oh, going to send you on an, an all expenses paid away trip to uh, to Highbury um and I'll go to Bow Love Hybrid. <laughs> yeah, you like it, don't you? Ed's uh, opinion is more akin to mine in terms of. It's a great stadium. The amazing thing I'll, is, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go. I will happily go if Paddy Madden's not playing because he always scores. If it's not Paddy Madden, I'll be fine. It's a great chippy as well. That's, that's a chippy. Awesome. <laughs> I haven't yes. been on this podcast in months and, and somehow I seem to recall the last two times Fleetwood's goal music, is, is <laughs> which I think says a lot about how it... It's uh, a regular topic. It's a regular we're scarred <laughs> by it. We're scarred by it. It's a uh, regular topic. It's, it's, it, leaves, it leaves, trust me, it leaves, takes a lot of getting over when you've heard it regularly when your yeah, team just has played Pl- there. Just ask Plymouth fans. That's all I was yeah, What team did they play in the cup game who were like, what is this music? It was, it was Hull on the TV. It was on the it was TV. Hull. It was a Friday night game, League One, Hull fans. Oh, it was Hull fans, they, yeah. First time they played them, they weren't used to that. We did warn them. Yeah, there you go. It's, uh, it, it is, it's very um, synonymous with the club now. So, yeah, you can't, you, can't deny it. you can't deny it. It works well for them. And uh, if it strikes terror into the opposition and the fans, <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> Keep doing it. Uh, Accrington and Blackpool played out a nil-nil draw. Accrington by far the better team in this one. Um, but again, Blackpool didn't get beat. They'll be impressed with uh, going because Accrington's a tough place to go. Let's not 
let's not pretend this is a team that I don't think get enough credit for, for what they're doing. I mean, they're doing fantastically well. Um, and I'm still scarred by a trip to Accrington a good six, seven years ago in the Cup. They were a league below us at the time. God, remember those times. Um, and we lost 1-0 to them in the FA Cup, I think it was, or Johnson Paint Trophy or something like that. And it's just that open terrace at the back. It's just a horrible place to go. <laughs> what, well, was the weather bad as well, was it? Oh, yeah, it's Accrington. It's always bad weather. <laughs> and they are five points off top. That's ridiculous. With three games in hand. That, oh, that's ridiculous. I just look at that table, I think. What? They've got th- yeah, they have got three games in hand. That's ridiculous. Can you imagine Accrington being top of, of this division? You know. I love it. I love it. It's crazy. Why it's we love, and explode. Why we love these leagues. It's why, we, yeah, it's why we spend too, far too much time that is healthy to cover them. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's the moments like this. This is what we live for. In, indeed it is. Swindon drew 2-2 with Charlton. This is a massive result for Swindon because I think they were on a, like, was it four straight defeats before this game? Something, something really sort of concerning. Um, and if you, if you lose this game, you know, you're going into a difficult and busy schedule where you've just not, you know, it would have been their, yeah, it would have been their fifth straight win. You know, and they've got, uh, I think, well, they've got a different game at Portsmouth on Boxing Day. So that's kind of like a gimme, isn't it, at, at the moment? But you've then got two vital home games coming up against MK Dons and Wigan Athletic. Um, and those two arguably are the most important games of this entire run that they have coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. They, you know, they've got Ipswich away and Doncaster at home after that. Those are difficult games. If you don't get points against Wigan and MK Dons, you're in big trouble. I mean, you've got to look to win. I'd argue you've got to win both those because the likelihood is you will lose at least two of those other three games based on form right now. So uh, Swindon need to uh, need to be careful. Um, again, they don't want to get cut adrift. They're right in and amongst the, the sort of the relegation pack, and it's a. Uh, it's a difficult campaign. They brought in John Sheridan, who was proud of his players yesterday, and, and you know they did keep going. But Swindon fans were telling me on Twitter that they didn't understand why Charlton didn't go for the throat because they were there for the taking, and Charlton are a team with ambitions at the other end of the table. You know they're sitting seventh at the moment, um, and they should have they should have won the game. And someone actually said to me yesterday, and I, I think he was being serious. Bowie out. <laughs> oh, if you well, want to do that, yeah. I mean. Bring him to Burton. I don't mind that at all. <laughs> do that, certainly. But no, well, I don't know why Bayer would leave Charlton. That's a bad After idea. the summer they had, they're seven. That's a league. bad idea. Really bad idea if you want to go with him. There's He's always just... fans at every club, though, that would say stuff like That's that. That's true. That is true, actually. Yeah, after after single defeat. Yeah. Yep. I, I saw it. We'll get to the stage you... in foot. Well, you know how it is. You're 11th. You lose two games in a row. Oh, we're going down. We're doomed. A lot of fans are very reactionary when it comes to football. React yeah. one game at a time. It's the way we are. Yeah, that's right. You win three in a row, and then you lose next. Yeah. yeah I think I'm pretty. I I try and be. I'm older now, so I've <laughs> I've I've a bit wise to it because I've seen what how a low a team can go. Uh, but I think in the end, you, as what you was that older, points tally you go on about? Was it 2001? What was the points total? I I. I've deliberately put that out of my memory. Thank you for bringing that uh, up. Ed. I was, was uh, going to say because we're on thirteen. I wonder if we were going to beat it. We did do well. We that conceded, conceded hundred goals. I think it was more than hundred. I'm going to have a look. <laughs> it was two thousand to two thousand one. It was my first season ticket at Oxford, uh, and we were dreadful. But on my birthday, we did beat we Walsall, quick. who were doing quite well. We beat them thanks to two Phil Gray goals. Phil Gray, if you remember Phil Gray, Oxford fans. Uh, he looked like he didn't have half-time oranges, but half-time pasties. Um, <laughs> 27 points they got. I right, see. So well behind us. Well behind us. Oh, the way it's going, it could be the same, Mal. I don't know about 100 goals conceded, but... No, it's 57 that season, apparently. But there, was a, there was a season that Oxford conceded 100, I'm sure. It was, so yeah, it was, it it was, well. it was that 2001 season, I've got it here. How was it? How many did we concede? 100. 100. Exactly 100. 100. Exactly 100. And 53. So, yeah, our player of the season was our goalkeeper. <laughs> Richard Knight was our player. Oh, well, that, says it, that says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, that sums it up pretty well. He, he did well, I've heard. apart from a nightmare at Millwall. I seem to remember he, he was a great, he was a great keeper. I think he was so traumatized that come the season late, he retired to, to retire from football. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for that, Ed. You've really cheered up my uh, my festive period, right? So, let's Pleasure. have a quick 
look at, at the league table. So we've got Portsmouth sitting top at Christmas with Lincoln second. Lincoln second. It's almost as if someone predicted they'd do well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You've got to get one of these right one day. Well, yeah, I do. You know, what's, it, what's, it your, what's, that, expression about, what's that expression about a clock you keep going on about, Chris? Yeah. I'll just keep reminding you about Notts County. Yeah, no, let's not do that. Uh, Hull <laughs> third. Doncaster fourth. Peterborough fifth. Ipswich in sixth with Charlton, Accrington and Crew all that side. Let's just like remind people though that this table is, is so it's misleading. Portsmouth are on 35 points. Um, Gillingham in 13th are nine points behind them. You know, so it's... Absolutely... We did say that this league was going to be tight. I didn't think it would be this tight. It's brilliant. Um, and it's, there's so, brilliant. so much Fantastic. variation in the number of games played because obviously... Yeah. And there's going to be because of this ridiculous COVID protocol that just decides whatever you want to do, really. I don't play it, understand don't it. Play it. Who cares? Yeah. If you don't yeah. want to play it, you don't play it. <laughs> Unless I you jump me. Yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid. It needs it needs sorting out, but we won't we won't dive into that as so we're yeah. we're gonna be a long pod here anyway, I think. But uh Burton unfortunately at bottom uh for Christmas with Wigan, Swindon and Shrewsbury. Though Shrewsbury are on a pretty good run. I think it's five unbeaten for them in the league, so they're doing pretty well. Uh Northampton teetering on the edge along with Rochdale, Bristol Rovers. Um, I think we'll be fine. Tisdale football will we'll get them out of it. Oxford, well, as long as we keep beating the sort of the teams around them. I mean, in fact, we beat Accrington away this season. Is probably that's probably our best performance of the season. Um, very pleased. No, that's that. we beat Accrington, James. It's not that special. Oh, I feel it is for us. <laughs> Given the season we've had, I'll take it. Like I say to my, my dad, who obviously supported the club before they were even called off United, <laughs> I say we'll just stay up this season. You, you know, I know we've had lofty ambitions in the in the pre-season campaign but just just stay up and make sure that once this pandemic's over we're in in the third tier i can't i can't take another season of league two i spent too long watching them in that division join us join us <laughs> no you join we'll us see you next season chris <laughs> yeah right so let's jump down then into league two sorry to do this to you luke but the best result in league two was barrow 3-0 against Cheltenham. What happened? I think it was a rare off day. And, and when you look back at the sort of going back for the results, I think Cheltenham haven't lost them um, back-to-back league games since February 2019. We, It was April 2019, we lost 4-0 at, at Morecambe. Um, and that was the last time they lost a league game that heavily. So, which shows you how, how much of a good job that, that Michael Duff and the, and the team have done. But yeah, an off day yesterday. And I think, you know, full credit to, to Barrow. Quigley and James were outstanding up front. Um, they were brilliant. They, they dropped deep as well to win the ball back. They, they were absolutely unbelievable. They had their fans in. The pitch wasn't the best, but there's no excuse in terms of, in, in terms of the result. Um, and, and, and as Ed said you know, before the podcast, they played with... The shackles were off a little bit, I think. Um, Kelly's done brilliantly. They played with freedom. And um, and I think on that performance, I cannot see them struggling. I know it's only there. I think it's their third league win of the season now, isn't it? But I can't see them struggling um, after that. Ed, you had some insight into this, didn't you? What was the, what was it? The expected points it should have been a lot a lot higher than they've got. Yeah, I remember reading this table about expected points, and I think it said a couple of games ago, Barrow were meant to have ten more points than they actually did. Mm. Whereas Colchester, for instance, were actually ten points better off than expected. So. They have underperformed a bit under David Dunn. I wasn't too surprised that they got rid of him, to be honest, because you had to look at their current form and the position they were in. They did look in danger of slipping into that bottom two. I do understand the reason to let him go, and I hope that Barrow can make a good appointment. I think Dino Marmer has been linked, and I think he'd be a great choice for them, certainly. Yeah, so. yeah I, wrote, I wrote a piece about that on the website if you want to have a look. Um, there are several reasons why a character like, like Dino would, would be a good at a club like Barrow. Um, but especially when you consider the turnaround. But at the moment, maybe their uh, their caretaker. I mean, we see it a lot. Yeah. Caretakers have good spells. Then they you do get, see it. Yeah, they get. Turnaround. Although Mark Bonner, I think, is a good example of a caretaker that's worked out really well. Mm. He's doing fantastic yeah, do. for Cambridge this season. They, yeah, they are. So big credit to Barry uh, Lincoln. Obviously, any any fans saying Duff out yet, uh, Luke? Oh, no, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Below Forest Green, not good enough. <laughs> that's, well, that's a rarity. Given <laughs> we've literally spent uh, many, many years above them, so uh, there's a long way to go. Long way to go this season. The vegan army, still, still right up there. Still right up there. Um, but yeah, no fair play to Barry. Great credit to them. 
a fantastic result. And uh, I think, like Ed says, the 10 point, uh, it passes the eye test. If you've watched Barrow this season, they actually are a good team. You know, they're not a team that you'd expect to struggle at this level. There's, I think there's still some of that fluidity from under Ever that they had in the National League. You can see it with people like, I think Quigley was sensational that National League season, wasn't he? And he really showed his worth yesterday. Particularly they missed him, didn't they, at the start of the James. season? Yeah, but Dio Angus is a good striker as well. He's a good option and behind. Good use of his pace, certainly. Yeah, they've had a few injuries. I think that's that's not helped, to be honest. They've got quite a small squad and a bit like... We were, we were saying about Rochdale, you know, once you, you lose a bit of your depth, it, it'll have to use a bit of your depth players. It it can it can cause problems for, for a club like Barry. But uh, massive result yesterday. Fair play to them. Um, this is a serious this is a serious table I've looked at here. Morecambe are fifth. Morecambe are fifth in this division. I that mean, is real, yeah. Hmm? That just, is I'm the real shocked. table. They were two hundred to one preseason. Two hundred to one to the bookmakers, title. Bookmakers know nothing. What honest. they know nothing. They really do know nothing. <laughs> I have to say some of the odds you see regarding clubs are embarrassing at the start of the season it's like reading some of the national papers uh, predictions on League 1 and 2 where you look at it and think what is that? <laughs> who, who finished where last season we'll just go with that again and just put some other ones in oh they're a big club they'll be at the top two the, the odds has changed haven't they since Leicester won the Premier League at 5,000 to 1 I think it was everything across the, the leagues they just calmed down 20 to 1 that's all yeah. we'll give you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, parts of Morecambe and they're being made to eat the words for that one, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think the argument I've seen from a lot of people, um, a lot of Colchester fans were saying yesterday that Morecambe thoroughly deserved it. But if they had a more prolific front man, uh, not having a go at any of their strikers, could Cole Stockton has done an excellent job this season. His hold-up play is good. Yeah. He possibly should have had more goals for sure because he's had some very good chances gone, gone uh, amiss. But if they did have a... a, a Sort of a targeted goal scorer, some who would put the ball in, then they 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 could be automatic. I don't know actually. I feel like Stock, Stockton's a warrior. You know, <laughs> he's an outlet for them, isn't he? And when you've got the midfielders they've got, people like Wilde, Kenyon, Phillips, the goals they've got, Mendes Gomez, a goal scorer as well, John O'Sullivan, what a fantastic volley that was yesterday. If you've got goals from midfield and then a guy who can just be the sort of focal point and lay off others like Stockton does, I don't think it's a problem. He got a goal yesterday, Stockton. Mm. It was an own goal. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the point that some of the more fans are making is that you know if they had someone who was who was scoring as freely as someone like a Paul Mullin, for example, you know they would they well, would. I've always wondered if Leach Smith could be that. I know he's had persistent injury problems, which has really problem, held him back. Yeah. But I just think Leach Smith is a very good player at this level and could be if he got a consistent run of games. Do you see him getting that run though? He's, he's like you say, injuries no, have really. He, he can't. He can't keep fit. That's the problem. No, and so that's why he's, that's that's why he's at Morecambe. I think. No offense to Morecambe, but he came there a couple of seasons ago, after impressing. Uh, or he was he was like a really uh, high highly rated prospect in Scotland, wasn't he, for a while? Yeah, and he was. It was. Was it crew? Yeah, he came. I think it was crew. a crew for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And I know. I know he went up to Scotland. and Everyone was talking about him being, you know, a really promising player, but he just can't. Yeah. He can't stay fit. One, one. I mean, like you say, Phillips has done well. That Cooney's done well when he's had to come into the team. Um, they have just performed admirably. Songo has been an excellent signing, giving them a bit more grit. Yep. Um, you know, Bradley. we haven't seen them have capitulate like they they did against teams like Crawley and uh, and, and Cambridge. We haven't seen that recently. Uh, they've been a lot more solid. And like you say, Ed, I agree with you. Goals from midfield, you know, all over the pitch. That's going to be valuable. Vital. It's valuable to have goals from more than one player. That's what more have got. You and can't. Greatest player never, the team. Yeah. Well, most improved, I'd say, certainly. He's yeah. been sensational since Adams, Adams has come in. He's been fantastic. He's been brilliant. He's been yeah, he's been, brilliant. he's been a really brilliant player. Um, right. They're adaptable as well, haven't they? Sorry, I know you probably want to move on, but just, just saying there's a couple of games this season when uh, certainly at Cheltenham on opening day and I think at Tramia as well, they changed their shape yeah. and got yeah. wins. So that squad can, can adapt to different systems. And a lot of teams kind of have one way of playing and they stick to that. But yeah. they all can have the players that can sort of switch it up. They can go to a back five. Yeah, put Mendes Gomez up top rather than out in the wing or exactly. a bit more central. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. had Jordan Slew playing as a striker a lot this season, but he can play Yeah, he wing. has been up there. Yeah. Yeah. He, played, yeah. he came through as a striker. That's, cause we had him uh, on Love and Blackburn yeah. a while back, and he, but he was a striker at the time. He's sort of played, gone a bit more on, on the wing now to use his pace, I think. He was a well, FIFA beast for years. He was, yeah, 90, 94 pace, I think it was. <laughs> Derek, <laughs> Derek Adams has done a great job in his recruitment. Obviously, yes. getting versatile players, you can play multiple systems in a, in, a, in a league and then in a season where getting 
games are coming so quickly um, where you have to be adaptable. And yeah, he's done a great job. Uh, let's move on to Grimsby because they won the derby yesterday. Uh, but this has come on the backdrop, hasn't it, of, of basically, if you don't know this, Grimsby Town have had a uh, chairman in charge in John Fenty. He's been there for 17 years now, 16, 17 years, something like that. Oh, yeah. And in that time, obviously, they haven't done very well. They've struggled. I think their average league position during that time is something like 91st in the Football League. They had six years in non-league and they have questionable training facilities at Cheapside. It's not the best facilities if you uh, listen to what their fans say. And then we had this for all last week where a convicted fraudster, a man who has been convicted and sentenced to six years in prison for defrauding mostly, according to the stories, pensioners out of up to three point something million pounds worth. He basically took their identities, remortgaged their houses repeatedly and pocketed three over three million and tried to get another three million. He was convicted for it. He claims he's innocent, but he also says but he served his debt to society. So if he's innocent, why has he saying he served his debt to society? Mm. Um, contradiction there. But he was invited by the board, uh, we assume John Fenty, who had started a company with this guy at company's house, to come and watch football and invest and, and potentially buy a million pounds worth of shares. And Ed's head in his hands here, because the only reason that this hasn't happened is because they were found out. People were like, we know who that man is sitting in the stand with you. He's this chap who's been convicted of fraud. Uh, and, and then the fans were like, no, we don't want anything to do with this guy. We don't want him investing in our club. Obviously, uh, he would fail the owners and directors test because of his criminal conviction. So he wouldn't be allowed to be a director, but he could have potentially been a shareholder and invested the million, which the club said in a statement they were going to use to uh, buy or build a new training facility. But the club statement was a worry to me because it wasn't apologetic. And it said in that statement, it is our duty as the board to consider any application for investment in this team. No, it's no, no. Your duty <laughs> as the board is to look after the long-term interests of this club, the integrity of this club. This is a community asset, this club in Grimsby. You know, that's what it is. It's not your duty to say, here's a man who's been convicted of fraud. Let's listen to what he has to say and take his money. It's just, just shut up. And the only thing they said was, oh, the reason we haven't done this, given everything that's happened, uh, we've decided to reject his offer. You mean you were found out and it caused public outcry? That's why you've rejected his offer. I mean, jeez. Uh, Ian Holloway comes out um, and he, he condemns this whole thing. Uh, he condemns the current owners. He condemns the, uh, you've got, is it Tim Schutz who's trying to purchase the club or invest at least in it? Um, and it, it's getting all political. So, you know, fair play to Ian Holloway, but it's not conducive to a, a club that's going to, A, attract new players who want to go there and play, and B, give a good, uh, good feel-good factor around a team that have been struggling. Who wants to take this first? I think you've summed it up. It's, it's just, yeah. don't, don't go near a fraudster. It's, like, it's the first rule of football investment. It, it just baffles the mind, doesn't it, that we've had all this, you see all these terrible owners that have been near Tell already, and Grimsby were generally considering bringing in someone with a proven record of fraud. They were talking to him. Like, they were actually I just, talking I just don't to get him. it. I, I don't get it. I really anyway. don't understand it. Avoid. It shows you maybe the desperation that clubs find themselves in at the moment, and perhaps... No, they... I, can't, I can't believe he was the only person interested. He's not, though. I can't there believe are, that. They're genuine... I can't believe that. Yeah, who's that, who's that guy from Bolton? <laughs> is, he, is he knocking around? <laughs> this, this, this guy, um, he's changed his name now, um, and I can't remember. Is it someone May... Alex May, I think he's going by the name of this Forster. Um, he tried to get involved at Notts County, I believe. He tried to get involved at other clubs and was just, no, they just, no. And I think Grimsby should have been like, I mean, they apparently, he came to five or six matches. That's how many games. When fans can't go and watch matches, he's been allowed to watch five or six games with them because of his potential investment. And, you know, they shouldn't even be considering this. Um, you know, they've rejected it, but it, you should have just said no as soon as you found out about his history. He said no. I mean, terrible. But I don't want to dwell on it too much because we've got Oldham to get to, uh, who have now won seven away, uh, seven straight away victories. That's an equal club record. You've beaten Newport away, and they have not lost at home all season. You've now got 19 points on the road in is it nine away matches now? Yep. yep. And last season you only managed 16 away points in 19 <laughs> away matches. I mean, Chris, what's happened? Turn around. 
I, I'll just note that we did actually lose at home during the week as well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we continue in a fantastic ability. I think we've won two at home all season. Um, but not, not been great. We, we just become lose. a travelling team. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, Bound- Lee Boundary Park, become a travelling team. Play every game away, you'll win the league. <laughs> First time I've seen Chris on, on a podcast with, like, this is genuine good older news. And I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm, I'm, let's, let's dissect it. I, I, I don't, I, I would dissect it, but I still don't understand it myself. Um, it's the way you play, though, surely. Like, away from home, yeah. like, it's psychological. At home, you, even when there's no fans, I think you're, you know, there has been stats come out saying that's changed a little bit without fans, but you still have to try and be on the front foot. But when you're away from home, you've got players at, up, you know, up top like Bahambula, Zach Dernley, Conor McElhaney, uh, Bada Bing, Bada Boom, Bada Bahambula. <laughs> uh, Kyla Dunn as well, having a, a couple of really good games as well. Yeah, um, yeah. you've you got know, good players. We, we weren't too sure about Kyla Dunn uh, to start with, but last couple of games, he's, he's really shown a lot of worth. Two assists yesterday and a goal. Um, and I think it is, it is that sort of that attacking four, attacking five that we're playing with. Is, is you, you, You've hit the nail on the head. They're, they're quite an expressive um, set of players. So away from home, they're able to express themselves perhaps better than they can at home. It's, it's strange. I'm, in, I'm enjoying the ride. <laughs> and even have Danny Rose for this one. No, he's, a, he's injured. Even Danny he? Rowe. Don't need him. I think Grant, Bobby Grant. Did you say you don't need him? <laughs> <laughs> I think Bobby Grant's done a great job at, at, at leading the line while in his absence, you know, because yeah, yeah. he's not a big guy, but he does hold the ball up and he brings others in. And uh, Baham Buller's now got six assists. Yeah, and um, Zach, Durney, Zach Durney was on the bench and he came on and got a goal. He's like, as long as you keep him fit, Zach's going to be a great player, isn't he? But it's just, yeah. again, niggling I think, injuries. I think if we can add. I think we need to add something in the midfield to make it a bit tighter. Um, I, I'm like a broken record on our defence, so I won't go there. Um, no, Dylan Farge did not play well in midweek, did I he? I think what Oldham are missing in defence is a really, really experienced centre-back, one with a yeah, lot of championship and Premier League games. I, I think that would be I fantastic. Don't know where you could, I don't know where you could get one from, but someone no. like that, someone who maybe used to play for Bolton and Middlesbrough. Had someone like that, yeah. They're yeah, very rare, Red. The they you, are you rare, but yeah, there's got one of them around somewhere. My mind's blank. I um, can't think of a single player like that. You know. I can't either. And another penalty save from Lawler. That's three this season. That's the most in the top four tiers of English football. I looked it up yesterday. Ridiculous. Mm. And it's a good save as well. Good hands on it. I think it's Cambridge it, one's the best, but that was that was great. Because uh, every week I'll, I'll see people slagging off Lawler, Lawler and I think it's harsh. I don't think he's anything well, but too like special. Him or Zeus de la Paz. E- exactly. Exactly. Um, it's a no-brainer, isn't he's it? A, he's a solid League Two goalkeeper. He makes some errors, but that's why he's in League Two. Um, but he's been, been pretty good. He's been good. I think he's been very good. Yeah, been um, fine, yeah. One thing I will say about Oldham as well is the end of the season that highlights real of their goals. I mean, some of some of the goals, <laughs> goals all over the pitch. Well, you know, you get getting you're scoring the tappings and you're scoring the belters, and I think uh, certainly no lack of entertainment. Hopefully you can start getting a, a fair few fans back in. It's also worth pointing out, you've scored nine goals against Newport in two games. Yeah, we have, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, yeah. That's amazing. And actually, uh, this interesting stat that you've scored the second most goals in League Two this season, in 32, only Exeter scoring more, and you've actually conceded the most goals in League Two this season. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I think Pure they're just ball. doing, I think they've been told, look, you better make people's eye follow tenors good value for money. So can you just like, just go and really score bad, them. Going I think the aim is to make it a pound a goal. Yeah, it's quite good. You're no problem with tra- that. No problem with that. <laughs> you're on. You're on. Uh, you're on track. Certainly. Um, Walsall four wins in a row. First time since 2015. Uh, Daryl Clark's team. Yes, two nil down at half time. Four changes. I, just, I think. I think he's doing a really good job actually. Um, again, another manager who. Yeah, you know, arguably gets stronger as the seasons go along. He's got great pedigree. You can't. You can't argue with the fact that he's uh, he's done well at this level before. Um, and Wolves are up to eighth. I mean, we had them. I I had them sort of. Uh, yeah, I had them skirting with automatics actually in my predictions, if I remember rightly. But they've struggled a little bit. But the run they're on now leaves them seven points off the top. They are just outside the purse. I think a point outside the purse or something, or goal difference it actually is against uh, with Exeter uh, and and Salford just in there on the on the same number of points. So I don't know what do you reckon, Ed. This is a a Sadler side that uh, clearly are in good form, even though they were 
I'd say a little bit generous defensively, but it, it wasn't that bad a first half performance. No, it wasn't. Um, I think the problem was also a lot of this is and still been inconsistencies with results. There were a lot of draws in the first third of this season, which were really holding them back. But as we saw with Tranmere a few weeks ago, if you go and win four or five games in a row, you fly at this table mm. because it's so tight in there and that's what they're showing. And I think the main thing you ask Walsall fans, Rory Holden, they need to keep hold of him. He is the most creative outlet in their team. I think he got a hat-trick of assists yesterday, actually, in that win. He's a great player. He's fantastic. Plays on the right, or probably better in the number 10 role, we'd say. And they put Josh Gordon out on the right instead, which is really good to have him back in the team. And I've been loving Elijah Adebayo because I think he got quite a bit of criticism for his finishing last year. But I've always felt there's a striker in him. And he can be a lone guy. He's got the build, I think, to be the lone striker in the outlet. And the, the man on the end of the chances in the round of six-yard box, which if you look at the two, quite a few of his goals this season, it is. It's all from close range. About He's got great attitude delivery. as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. If you've got deliveries from people like McDonald, Gordon and Holden, if you get out of the in the right positions, he can easily get amongst the goals. And I think he's on seven this season, I think. Yeah. Look. I mean, Josh Gordon oh, he's, coming he's back. On to, eight. He's on eight in League Two now. Which, Josh Gordon yeah. coming back is a big boost, isn't he, as well? Definitely. And actually, I think one player who I'd go as far as to say is the most improved, I mean, his stats certainly back that up, is uh, Cameron Norman. Came off at half-time yesterday, so he probably didn't have the, be- the best game. But actually, over the course of this season, he's been a really good outlet on the right. I think he works hard. I think he's got good creativity. Um, and he's a, yeah, he's a pretty reliable fullback. He's he's really improved, and yeah. I think that's what's quite interesting as well is that these wins have come around with them changing Liam Roberts to Jack Rose in goal. And Roberts well. is always a bit shaky, hasn't he? Quite it? interesting. Yeah, yeah, he's always it's quite had... interesting. I, I didn't think Jack Rose was quite Liam Roberts level, but I guess he must be. In a way, he's, yeah, I think I think he is. Good I think competition he, for each other. I think that's what you need. I think you need. I do. I do think you need two good goalkeepers to compete. Um, like we've seen at Grimsby, there's a bit of an issue there, isn't there? Where they've got Sam Russell, their goalkeeping coach, playing in net. And um, I mean, who did? I didn't have a look at the squad. Did James McEwen play yesterday, or was it? He, he did start. Um, there's not much to talk about that Grimsby Scunthorpe game. It was bad. <laughs> it, it was bad. The only thing I'd say going back on Grimsby, Matty Pollock, 19 years old, the physical presence he's got at a guy that age, he's going places. Yeah. He's such. He's a presence at the back for so just 19 years old. Wonderful player. Really going to do well for himself in his career. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think he's such a bright prospect, and I'm, I'm pleased that uh, he's been getting game time regularly this season. I think he's a fantastic player. Uh, Forest Green they beat Carlisle one 0 That's uh, not a result to be sniffed at. Carlisle in great form, uh, but Forest Green possession based football again. A late goal, doing fantastically well. Result of the day, apart from Barrow, goes to Bradford beating Cambridge by a goal to nil. Yeah. Simply because they needed that win. Um, I'm not necessarily going to say they, was the, they were the best performers or anything like that. I haven't seen the, the full game. I've only seen the highlights. Lovely goal by Pritchard as well. But a massive win for the Bantams considering uh, the position there. And we've already discussed the Ryan Lowe links. I expect it won't be Ryan Lowe, um, as we've already said. But they will get someone in, I think, who can, who can turn this squad around. I think they've got enough in their team, like Barrow do, to not be worried about relegation. They just have to start being more consistent and finding a way to be more creative and, and get more chances going forward. They rely too heavily on, on players who are perhaps not at the right end of their careers in terms of age. And uh, I think there's, there's going to be needing a few, a few changes. I wonder if there's any money in January to do it, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Harrogate lost to Salford. 1-0 Salford, a team to keep an eye on. They've got the, I think they're the only team in the EFL now unbeaten at home this season. Is that right? We've not that played that yet. Right, yeah. yeah, that is right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the you derby, lost to, you, yeah, you played there, Chris. The you lost. Derby. Have we played there? Yeah, oh. you lost 2-0. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I, had to, I, had to analyze, <laughs> I had to analyze that game and I was quite surprised how poor you were that day compared to your previous away games. You know, it's kind of uh, a bit strange. Uh, Crawley yeah, I, away from home. They always like, I've noticed they, they like playing at Leighton Orient though because I'm sure they beat them there last season and Ollie Palmer scored like two or three goals. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah, they like playing there. But Max Waters, 16 goals, 17 appearances. People say like, uh, you know, championship clubs would be in for him. I th- it's, is he as good as a championship? You know, he's, he's done really well, don't get me wrong, but he's got some teammates that are... Is he, is he going to put Tom Nichols... Is he going to sign Tom Nichols and play him alongside him? Maybe, yeah. I think part of it... He's a poacher, mm. is what he is. He's an instinctive striker and it helps that he's got someone like Nichols who's happy drifting into space and opening up opportunities for him. I think Madison as well, with his pace. Madison as well, yeah. Yeah, they worry teams. If they've got that front... That front three is actually... I'd argue argue one of the best in, in the division. I mean, there's a few front threes. You know, we talk about Oldham's with McElhaney, uh, Durnley and Rowe and people like that. You know, there are a few, 
who can compete, I think, in terms of front trees. You've got, I think, Lloyd at Cheltenham's doing really well this season. He's he's come on leaps and bounds um, since since last year. Where didn't he go out and, out on loan last year? No, no. He, well, he, he was set to go out on loan this season, and then um, and then um, he broke into the team and and his, he uses his body brilliantly for you know. And he's, he's only he's only young. I believe he's only twenty. So yeah, um, it's, and it's always good for a player that comes through the the youth system to be doing well. So the fans are, are always sort of behind them as well. So yeah, no, he's he's been doing great. But I was going to say about Tom Nichols at Crawley. It's interesting because at Cheltenham he came in on loan last season. He didn't actually score. And I think many look at that season at Exeter as a player that you know, where it was almost deceiving in terms of he, he's a finisher, but he's not. And it's like Ed says, he, his ability to bring others into play is movement. And sometimes when he, he drops a little deeper as well, he, he's a very creative player. And I think then you put someone like Waters alongside him, you get goals. And I think um, the Crawley system really does suit Nichols because I don't think we, we saw the best of him at Cheltenham last year. Yeah, they're, they're getting the best out of him, certainly. Really impressed with him. Tranmere, massive win yesterday, 3-0 against Bolton after being terrible against Exeter. And I mean, they've had some really bad results, Tranmere. Keith Hill turned it around, going back to it against his old team, getting the win. Um, you know, I would say... The league still, though. That's the ridiculous thing. Out of the last eight games, no team's picked up more points, yet they lost 5-0 last week. What, is that Tranmere you're talking about? Tranmere, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Backwards, yeah. yeah. They've, they've done, they've done, yeah. You, know, you look at their squad, I'm not being funny, but there's not many stronger squads than Tram is on paper at, in this division. You know, Sid Nelson coming in yesterday for Manny Mont, I think Sid Nelson's a good defender. Um, they played Feeney as a, as I think, as a sort of a number 10 rather than yeah. out wide, and he did really well. Uh, Young came into midfield and, and was, was, according to Tram fans on Twitter, he was superb. So, you know, they have got a very strong squad. They've got people like Kane Woolery, who's not, not starting, I don't think. You've got Morgan Ferrier. Stefan Payne's out injured for a while, but he could come back in. I think James Vaughan coming back is huge. I think he offers them so much. Uh, he really occupies defenders. He scores goals. Um, and he's experienced, so he, he knows how to... You know, I'm not being funny, but he knows how to... And he knows how to smash in a penalty as well. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, he is does. one thing he did there. He absolutely walloped that one in. Jokes uh, didn't have a chance with it. They didn't, no. no and, and I have to say, you know, Bolton, still a bit hit and miss, aren't they? Um, never sure quite how, you know, they're quite expansive, so it leaves themselves open. I, th- I think Evan needs to accept it's not going to do what he did with Barrow with this team. It takes time. I, I don't yeah. think, it, I'm just not sure this system's right for these players. I saw them on Tuesday night. I've never known a team play as wide as they did. I mean, it was effective yeah. in Cheltenham, but my word, like, talk about expansive. Yeah, they unbelievable. Like the Isgrove, and I forget who the, the other lad was on the left, they're literally on the, the touchline. <laughs> Greenwich, wasn't it? It was Greenwich who, who Gren- played, wasn't it? Yeah, Greenwich. Greenwich, yeah. Huge. Greenwich, yeah. Absolutely yeah. huge as well. They're, they're a team of giants. They have Harry Brock back. Uh, Brock back no, back. you can't call them a team of giants because he called Walsall that. He never made a comment about Walsall calling them London the giants. Can't. No chance. Um, no. Bolton, biggest team I've seen in a long time. Yeah. No, uh, but again, like that, that expansive play, like you say, Luke, if a team like Tramid just condense a bit, it causes them problems by the look of it because... You know, this is how they got thrashed in, in recent games as well. Bolton have had a, a couple of big... Wasn't it against uh, Port Vale? They were absolutely taken apart. Yeah. Um, Leighton Orient took them apart as well, didn't they? A, few, a couple of months ago, 4 yeah. yeah, so they, 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 they're a team that it can, it can really backfire. Last team we've got to talk about, South End. I watched them yesterday. Um, first half, they were superb. Can't fault them at all. Superb yesterday. I'm telling you this now, right? Hot take. If Mark Mosley keeps them up, manager of the season. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Agreed, agreed. Luke's not allowed to say yes because uh, he's employed. <laughs> <the job. laughs> uh, if I, I, I just think that the fact that they start the season without a squad, essentially, um, they've had an embargo which has only just been lifted, so players that they did manage to bring in weren't allowed to play anyway. Uh, and they've got all those other, other problems. The fact that, that he's got them playing a good brand of football, a lot of youngsters still in that team, but no, you're seeing a spine now. You're seeing a spine coming. I mean, they've got Dieng and Hobson are their centre-backs because Harry Lennon's knee's gone again. Uh, so he's out for a, a long time and, and that's a big problem. But those two looked okay at centre-back yesterday. You've got Bomono at right-back. Uh, Ralph is out for the season, so their left-back was Clifford and he got injured. So Sam Hart had to come in and play left-back who, you know, he's his left-winger really, but he did well, I thought, to contain uh, Mansfield. I think, you know, Charlesley and, and Maris looked particularly threatening, but... Uh, Mansfield looked a lot better once Cook came on and had that physical presence to occupy those centre-backs there much better then. Um, 
Dimitri was out, but McCormack did a good job with Taylor at sort of that holding role while you got Ole Inca being a bit more free to run and he scored a lovely goal. Uh, blatant penalty, I'm sure we all agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Terrible decision. Um, I don't, yeah, we don't, in all honesty, we don't slate referees too much, but that was a bad decision and Brett Huxtable um, is not particularly well liked, I don't think, among fans at this level as a referee. You can't, uh, you can't say things like that, James. Oh, outrageous. Yeah, no. Uh, but it's a frustration. I think the frustration for fans is that, you know, when you're in Southend's position, every decision like that, and it was quite pretty clear one, it's not like one of those that you've seen given and haven't. It was a penalty. They could back across them, you know, and uh, you do not want to see that team get relegated. But I, like I said, if they stay up, and they could, you know, they could add a couple of players. I still feel Emil Aqua works hard up front, but he's quite inexperienced. And I thought he was a handful yesterday. Um, but maybe adding one more experienced striker in that team and an experienced well, centre-back. good ship still to return, haven't they? I've not been that impressed with him, though. I'll be honest this season. Mm. You know, I think... They're the best player when, when I'd watched Cheltenham win there. But again, they were really poor that day. But he, he, he was their best player that day. I just, I, I just don't think he, as we've seen in the games this season, has enough to, to be reliable to, to score their goals. I think you need someone with experience and know-how and you need a centre-back with experience and know-how. That's the two... Th- positions that I think they should prioritise in, in, in January. Um, but it'd be great to see them stay up because, yeah, you know, it's not right what's happened to them. And I think it's, uh, it's really unfortunate, but we'll see. Guys, brilliant Christmas pod. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, whatever you are doing. I know it's going to be very different this year. We're having one at home. Uh, can't see uh, the parents at all. So, um, but it is what it is. I'm sure we'll all get through it. I think, it's it's a difficult time for a lot of families, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I just hope everyone keeps hold of that and uh, and gets through. Of course, you know we're always here on Twitter. If you need to get in touch with us, if you're struggling, we're quite happy to to be that here for anyone. Um, and I think I speak for all of us when I say that because it's you know no one likes feeling lonely or down at this time of year. Um, Chris, what are your plans? Um, I'm off home to see my uh, my sister and my mum for. Just for one day now. One day, yeah, one day now. Yeah. <laughs> right, you Ed? Um, going to be spending time with the family, living at home at the minute, so the Christmas period, and um, brace myself for what's going to happen with Lincoln on Boxing Day next week, probably. But <laughs> no, try and stay positive in what's been a difficult year and keep positive with it all. Yeah, and you, Luke, how do you make? What's your what's your What's your festive plans? You're in tier two, so you can you've got the freedom of the city. Oh, yeah, well, it's, if you say go to the stadium, I'm I'm leaving the call. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So obviously, <laughs> apart from the the game on Boxing Day. Oh. Really worth it. Um, uh, yeah. Just seeing, seeing, I'm spending the Christmas with my girlfriend for the first time in in six years, so that'd be nice. There you go. Lovely. And uh, yeah, just to. All our listeners, all our patrons, everyone who's supported us since we've been doing D3D4 uh, D3, D4 football, help if I can say it, but Merry Christmas to you and have a great time. We'll be back, obviously, to cover all the football over the festive period. Uh, we're not quite sure when yet. I'm, I'm sure it'll be pretty much every Sunday, um, but there might be a few changes. It depends on the schedule. Uh, but I'd like to thank all my co-hosts for not just this episode, but just always being there. Me and Luke started this up. Luke, uh, yeah, I miss you, man. You know, you should be back on more regularly. We've got to get you back. Uh, Chris, you've been fantastic since uh, since coming on. And Ed as well. Uh, you're, you tweeted out about your being here for one year. It's been a wonderful year to have you on. Um, your knowledge and insight has been brilliant for this podcast. So, And it's not possible without you guys. So I really do appreciate everything you do for D3D4 Football. I'm sure our listeners do as well. And I just, uh, yeah. Did you all... Oh, hang on. I did you all adieu. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you later. Merry Christmas, everyone. All right.